so this shall be my gift to you, Elizabeth. Some days past, this lady did present herself to me and requested to serve as a lady in waiting to you. She hath proven most skilled and most charming indeed. I believe she would be a magnificent addition to your court. May it please your majesty. I am Lady Jane Haver of Edinburgh. Rise thee, Lady Jane. My face has the familiar note. Have we met before now? Well, I, it is possible that you did look upon me uh, from afar. Many years ago, when last I was in London town. Have you experience in serving a noble court? I served briefly in the court of France, and even in the court of your father, though unfortunately that appointment was cut short. How did so my father? Who are your majesty, though I was only but a girl then myself? Perhaps that is why thy countenance stirs her memory in us. Well, Lady Jane of Edinburgh, we are not normally in the habit of accepting strange women into our court, but thou hast the recommendation of one whose opinion we hold in high esteem. Therefore, welcome to our court. Ah. Thank you for my gracious gift, brother. Uh, I do hope it puts you in mind to consider my suit. Cecil! Get up! <laughs> it is no secret that I like thee not. Nor I thee. But on one thing we can agree. Aye. Anyone but Dudley. <laughs> Your Majesty, there are, of course, other suitors. Others indeed. Uh, we have here a, a jeweled sword sent from Sir Thomas Howard, Duke of Norfolk. Oh, Lord Norfolk, I adore his taste in fashion. Cut the fine figure in an overcloak. <laughs> Sir Thomas is but a soldier and understands nothing for the of court. Uh, we have here a great ruby called La Stella di Italia, sent from the Grand Duke Cosimo de Medici. Ah, oh, the Medicis, the merchant princes with bottomless coffers. Come now, there is more to marriage than the acquisition of wealth. Is there, though? Is there, really? <laughs> we have your exquisite fur cloak sent from the Tsar of Muscovy. Oh, the Muscovites are jolly people. Their winters are cold, but their hearts are warm. I do not believe that to be true. Oh, now listen. Every day the Muscovites are jolly people. We are grateful for your counsel, and we understand well the Elizabeth, 
Your sister is the reason that so many now rejoice at your ascension to the throne. Now that she is gone, let us speak plainly of her. Mary ruled this nation by terror and by fire, so I shall refer to her as she truly was. Bloody Mary! Bloody Mary! Bloody Mary! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> we are all in new territory here. Prithee, continue with thy counsel. Well, then I say that if the town cannot determine what to do with the land, it should become property of the crown. That way we may be able to determine what is best. Tesla, what sayest thou? Your Majesty, to truly determine whether wine or air would benefit this particular community best, we would need to consult the history of Propios. Likewise, uh, an average of with a good fetch in an open market. Indeed, it might be wiser to consult your court astrologer, John D. Oh, and, uh, hear me out. <laughs> would you decide the game of chess? Chess? That was decide a matter of policy with a frivolous chess match. Not just any chess match. A human chess match! Yes. Woo! to decide a matter of importance with a chess match. A human chess match. A human <laughs> chess match. <laughs> it might set a troublesome precedent for years to come. I think it's a wondrous idea, Your Majesty. The thrill and excitement of such a contest will please the good people. And so might the harsh necessity of policy be softened by the delight of pageantry. Thank you so, ladies. Would such a contest provide good sport? Let it be so. Alas, Your Majesty, I must admit I'm not familiar with the game. Nor I. Tis no matter. We shall appoint players in your stead. Cecil, thou hast the promise of a good stout ale to slayer. Thou shalt command the Hopkins army. As you command, Your Majesty. And Perry, we know thou dost enjoy thy wine. Even if I did not, I would relish the opportunity to defeat Lord Burley in any matter. I accept. Who knows? Perhaps some humility might silence his pontificating. Tis <laughs> settled then. Good masters, you have our permission to retire and select those to play on your behalf. Thank, Thank you, Your Majesty. Majesty. I shall uh, crush thee beneath my heel like the grapes of feel the press's wrath. I shall cut thee off the knee like a freshly mown barley crumb. Masters, you shall make no trouble in the shire until then, I trust. Oh, <laughs> nay, Your Majesty. Absolutely not. Then go. <laughs> <laughs> oh you see how a firm hand keeps the children in line, Elizabeth. Aye, Mary. So the question remains whether the behavior will linger beyond our presence. Oh, Majesty, a human chess game. Think you this wise? Wise? Not Steve Cecil, of course it is not wise. But simple folk may respond best to Dudley's simple solution. I agree, Your Majesty. When grown men behave as children, so might the fool for a moment act as sage. I thank you, Sir Henry. What means? We now have chosen a different form. Mayhap, Elizabeth. But I am no longer England's queen, am I? Hey, you are not. But, uh, no matter. Despite our past differences, we shall be glad of your company. Good people, have you had your fill of courtly matters? Aye. Did you begin this festival day in earnest? Oh, aye.